When I was working on my vegan creativity book back in 2018, my dear friend and mentor, Victoria Moran said, you absolutely must speak with Nava Atlas. She's a visual artist who frequently engages with feminist and animal rights themes in her work. And she's been publishing vegetarian and vegan cookbooks for many years now. Vegetariana, her illustrated debut cookbook came out in 1984 really satisfying to me revisiting our conversation that was in my book that came oh, out yes. the year that we met in person which That's was right. three years ago and feels and like be, a lot I was gonna say we call them now the before times the before times exactly because we met at the Hudson Valley Veg Fest right, right. it must have been 2019 right you're right yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um, no we had no idea what was coming at us <laughs> yes yeah yeah um but what I, what I brought this up was because we talk about you doing this new edition veganizing vegetariana in the book and you said should I do it I'm like yeah I'm so excited oh my gosh, I already forgot about this. that yeah yeah now veganizing it and redoing it was you know it was actually a lot of work but it was a good pandemic project so I decided to ditch a few of the old illustrations that I didn't like, do some new ones. And I have, I was finding that, you know, writing is easier now, recipe development is easier now, but the drawing was more difficult. And I, a few things ended up in the wastebasket, but it was good. I, I'm glad I had the opportunity to draw and now I want to do more of it. Yeah. Did you find that, was it a challenge to try to go back and uh, reproduce your old style? You mean in terms of the drawing or the- Yeah, puppet? the drawing. Yeah, oh, I guess both. But yeah, I was thinking the drawings. It, it was, yeah, that was, it was pretty difficult. And like I said, that's why I think a few things ended up in the trash. But then I got a chance to do some things that I, some people that I really wanted to include. For example, one of the reasons I wanted to redo it is because you know, again, 40 years ago, I was always defaulting to the male, you know, mm -hmm. the male voices. And I had the a one page uh, page about eminent vegetarians and vegans of the past. So now I have a two page spread with some women. And some of them are really surprising. Like I didn't know that Rosa Parks was a vegetarian for about 40 years. Coretta Scott King oh, yeah. mm -hmm. was a vegan for the last, I think, 10 years of her life. Amazing. Because her, her, their son, Dexter, is very involved with the animal rights movement. And uh, I mean, most of these are men here because it's from a while ago, and they're the ones who had the platform and the right. megaphone. But I did try to include more women authors in this. And after all, I also am really involved with women's literature. And, yes. Um, Yes, no, I, the yeah. Literary Ladies Guide, of course. The literary Ladies Guide. So I thought it really is incumbent upon me to include more female voices. Somehow, uh, Gertrude Stein ended up in the book twice. Because <laughs> <laughs> she said such weird and wonderful things. Oh, actually, no. This first one is a quote by uh, Alice, um, Alice Etoklas, who is a really famous cook and gardener. Oh. So, And the next quote by Gertrude Stein was something, you know, one of her absurdities. Oh, and you know, I just wanted to draw some people I really like, like yeah. Che Guevara and Karl Marx is somewhere here. He, Karl Marx is so fun to draw. <laughs> uh, yeah, so here's Karl Marx. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, I, you know, it was a challenge to kind of match it up with my old style. Because as you know, as a writer, even as a writer, you're kind of your outlook and your whole way of doing things changes even from decade to decade so and this is visual so if I didn't match it up it would be mm. really obvious yeah so. your style evolves over time you know you're not necessarily trying to you know introduce new elements and your, your, your sensibility is naturally evolving and so your of course your your drawing style I would imagine <laughs> would you know change along with it but, yeah, I do um, a lot of my art digitally now Oh, yes. Yeah. Like one of these young people today. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, having a pencil in my hand is, is already a really strange concept, but I, it was so satisfying when the drawings came out well. So, like I said, I, you know, I really don't want to get out of practice again. Yeah. So I challenge myself to draw more often. Yeah. And, so and can and I, can I show you what's cooking here in my kitchen? Oh, yes, please. I want to see what's for lunch. It's not going to be 
doing demo. Actually, this is going to be for dinner because my son is oh, okay. coming over. So I think I, maybe I'll need to push this back a tiny bit. Oh. But this kind of ties in to ingredients and techniques and how things have changed. So I have collard greens, mm -hmm. which here, this is a full collard green. I didn't used to use collard greens quite as much until I did this book, Wild About Greens. Mm. And the old style of doing collard greens was to chop them up and then boil them to death. <laughs> and it, you know, and then they become this like drab olive color and they're kind of slimy. So the new way of doing this, and again, I don't know, maybe I need to adjust a little bit. Oh, here we go. A okay, little bit that's better. Mm -hmm. So here's the whole leaf. We're basically cutting it off the stem, which is really too tough to eat. I just discarded. I'm sure it could be like used for stock or something. Mm -hmm. So the yeah, new way of doing collard greens and why collard greens are so important in the vegan world is that they're a great source of calcium. So you, know, you just stack a few leaves on top of each other. Mm -hmm. right. This is and such then, a treat. And then roll it up really, really tightly mm -hmm. like this. And then slice them really, really thin into ribbons. Mm -hmm. And then because they're going to be very long, I cut once the other way. I mean, you saw how easy that was. Yeah. And then I, you know, I put them in a colander and I give them a good rinse. I mean, you you bring things home from the grocery store now, it looks like they've had a bath, but I still like to rinse things even mm -hmm. they're, if they're organic. So, so there are these like really nice ribbons. You can stir fry them. That's the, my favorite way to stir fry. Mm -hmm. put them into soups whatever and they cook up really quickly and they be they're bright green like yeah. they should be um so the other thing that i'm going to be cooking oh here's this is a good trick because people really like butternut squash oh, yes. and have you ever come across a recipe that says peel and dice your butternut squash but they don't mention that you need a chainsaw to do <laughs> it right That's so and true. i always felt so inadequate you know, why can't I cut this with my decent knife? Yeah. So I cheat a little bit. I wrap it the whole thing up in foil. It would never have occurred to me to cook it that way. That's awesome. Put, put it in the oven. You know, I'm going to have a, the oven on. It's going to be hot. I'll show you what I'm making next. And then if you're going to do something else with it, if it's going to be part of another dish or a stir fry or a stovetop thing, uh, you bake it about halfway until you kind of can poke through mm -hmm. the solid part with resistance so then when it cools off it's so much easier to slice scoop out the seeds you can use a, a terrible knife not a chainsaw or a chef knife and you know now they also have the pre-cut butternut squash in the in the produce section and i you know i do do that it's not a cheat it's still sure. fresh produce yeah. I don't care if yeah. you know if it encourages people to use more squash and some of the prep has been done and that's why the prep has been done because it's so hard to do the prep yeah. that being said it's still more it's still tastier it's still fresher tasting then if also if you want to do it this way and just keep it in the oven until it's really mushy that's what you use for your pie and it's a really good substitute for sugar pumpkin, which is a pain in the neck, even more <laughs> of a pain in the neck to bake than this. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, I don't spend, you know, we're here, this is midday, but in no way do I spend time in the kitchen in the middle of the day. I'm too busy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's why people like my books is because they're quick. I, I like shortcuts. It's easy. Most people get home, they're, you know, six o'clock or if they work from home, six, seven, you know, they can't start making a meal, you know, for one or two hours. It has to be quick and I want to keep it real. Yeah. So the other thing that I made, and this is really interesting too, because of adjustments. I love roasting. I love roasting all kinds of combinations. And this one is going to be the main dish because it also has vegan sausage, mm -hmm. something that didn't exist I don't know when it came on the market, but whatever came on the market, it's probably not as good as it is today. Oh, yeah. Right? And then also uh, polenta, mm -hmm. which just sort of gives the whole dish a real yum factor. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. you know, even though I did, you had to do a little bit of cutting. I don't know that this took me more than 10 minutes to prep. And you know, because roasting just brings out the flavor so much, you don't need to put a lot of things on it. 
You right. just drizzle it lightly with oil. A little bit of olive oil and just some general like um, salt-free seasoning. And that's it. I don't want to, you know, it's called gilding the lily. Everything, the roasting brings out so much flavor mm. that I don't want to mask it with something else. Yeah. So, um, so that's what's cooking, what's going to be cooking for dinner. I may, you know, with the collard greens, after this is about half roasted, I may just throw the collard greens in there. I wouldn't want to put them at the beginning because then they'll become kind of too overcooked. Yeah. Um, oh, and another thing I was going to say, you know, let alone all the products now that we have, you know, the vegan sausages, the vegan, all kinds of, you know, meat substitutes, supermarkets have so much more variety in terms of produce than they used to even 20 years ago. So I can go to the supermarket and get jicama mm. was, you know, when I was writing my second book about American food, you could only get this in the Southwest or by special ordering. And, you know, now, and, and I absolutely love all kinds of radishes, you know, daikon yeah. radish. This mm -hmm. was at the supermarket before you'd have to go to a specialty market or an Asian market to get things like that. And so I found that, you know, that now supermarkets have a, a natural food section, but the truth is that I love the produce section the most because there's just so much variety compared to what there used to be. Yeah, and you and you can't. I mean, you, you get so excited just walking into the produce section and seeing all of the life, as opposed to going to the to the butcher section and seeing all of the death. It's like all of this right. beautiful living food that um, is so colorful and so nourishing and so good for you. And then you and then you see possibilities. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I just, I also, aside from, you know, recipes, I, I just love to improvise based on what's at the store, what's in the fridge. It's so fun. Mm. There's no pressure. And there's really, like, I, I really try stressing to people, it really doesn't take a lot of time. That's just an excuse. Yeah. You know, yeah. Any kind of meal takes a little bit of time. I, you know, a vegan meal doesn't really inherently take more time. Oh, this has already been so very nourishing in more ways than one. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's so fun to see what you're cooking today or, you know, what you will be putting in the oven in a little bit. But yeah, and that's- yeah, I'm thinking if I get a little bit ambitious, I might take the jicama, so it's already have a hot oven and make jicama fries. Mm, ooh, yeah. yes. Yeah, that yeah, sounds good. Fun. Yeah, yes. I mean, basically it's just chopped up jicama, but you cut it into fry shapes and it looks, you know- enticing that way because I'm you know we do eat with our eyes as well that's true yeah yeah there is that is that aesthetic element that yeah, especially uh, me I'm a very visually oriented person mm -hmm. and the, the uh saying is you also eat with your eyes mm. so it has to look good I mean is aren't colorful vegetables more appealing looking than you know beige whatever <laughs> Check out Nava's delicious and inspiring links in the notes below this video.